How much do you understand the control involved in the landing? How difficult is that problem? I couldn't tell you a single thing about like the code and like the avionics behind it, but I can tell you all the hardware that makes it happen, if that helps. Well, that, <laughs> yeah, I mean, to me, it seems like whenever I talk to people, they, they say it's not that big of a deal in terms of the, the level of intelligence and the control. But to me, it's just like when you observe it, it seems incredible because oh, all the variables involved, all the uncertainties involved, all the, um, because there's aerodynamics. I mean, like there's different temperatures. There's so so much going on with the fuel, the burning, the the, the combustion, just everything that's going on to be able to do perform control at such high stakes effectively. Like you know, I, that code is probably not written in JavaScript. I guess is what I'm saying. Anyway. Actually, no, I don't. It, it if I remember, I again, this is well outside of my domain. Um, but um, I'm they they code in a common language. It's is, uh, yeah, it's, prob it's probably going to be C. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. And that was one of the things that was weird is that Elon, when he you know started SpaceX, was like, we're just going to code in the most common language so that mm -hmm. we don't have to like have people we learn this archaic, you know, weird thing. And we can just literally pull people off the streets and be like, here, write it, you know? And yeah, it's probably C++. I mean, it'd be epic if it was like Python or something, but I don't, I, I think like reliable systems have to be written in C, C++ probably, which is a common language, which is something uh, I imagine like NASA engineers would probably have to use some kind of proprietary language in the, uh, in the olden days for for security, for privacy, all that kind of stuff. Um, well, in the olden old old days, like yeah, they were no, inventing yeah, you know, <laughs> code and language from scratch. Uh, for but, sure, it was still it's just still incredible that it's able to do that. Like just the feat of engineering involved is just it's truly it's like one of the marvels to observe about these rockets coming back to Earth uh, that they're able to land. Like the drama of yeah. it is just incredible to see. Yeah, well, the, the one of the fun things to remember too, with specifically with the, the Falcon Nine and, and the Falcon Nine or Falcon Heavy boosters, I mean, it's the same thing basically. Um, they shut down all but one of the nine engines, and even with that one engine at its minimum throttle setting, mm -hmm. it's still too much thrust to hover. So as this rocket's coming down, if they start a little bit too early, if they light that engine too early, it will actually stop above the ground and will not be able to lower itself. It will literally stop, like, say, I mean, stay, say it stopped 200 feet above the ground. Their only option is to kill the engine, and then it's just going to fall yeah. those 200 feet. So they, it's what we call like a suicide burner, a hover slam, kind of interchangeable terms, because your thrust to weight ratio is never below one. Yeah. So they have to actually literally be riding the throttle. So what you do is you kind of start, ideally, you know, you kind of start like in the middle of your window of, of throttle range. So let's pretend your engine can throttle down to 40% of its maximum rated thrust. You might start at like 70% of thrust in the middle of that like window of where it could burn. So that so if all of a sudden it's kind of coming in too hot, you have room to throttle up. Mm -hmm. If you're coming in too, you're actually, you know, a little too early, you throttle it down. You have a little bit of wiggle room. And it's just amazing how smoothly and how perfectly they're able to still control that thing, even though they're, though they're down to one engine out of the nine, and they're still riding like the finest margin of what's possible. And they're they're continually playing with that to try to get it because every every bit of fuel they're using and propellant they're using to land. Is propellant they're, they weren't using to put something into space. Yeah. So they want that to be as efficient as possible. So they're really like watching them hone that in and and just continue to evolve and edit that and, and just get it to be the workhorse. We're coming up on a hundred consecutive landings, perfect landings, a hundred. I think they've done like 150 something landings altogether, 160 altogether, but we're talking like in a row without blowing up, which mm -hmm. at the, you know, five years ago was completely experimental and insane. And now we're coming up to the point where we're, hundred in a row, it's like, this is becoming more reliable in the landing, which is not the primary mission. This is purely for SpaceX's like gain is to recover the booster. It has nothing to do with the effect of getting the payload on orbit, you know, most of the time. And uh, the landing is really only for their their benefit and their gain. Long-term gain, like it's a long-term investment in in uh, being able to recover the, uh, the, the, the boosters.